the next person I'm about to call up, please permit me to read her profile. She is an international seasoned school improvement strategist, leadership coach, and career coach with an impressive 25 years of experience in both industry and education. Over the past years, she has demonstrated her leadership prowess by successfully establishing and managing three educational facilities, two schools and one education center for two prominent education companies. Her expertise shines in various areas, including sales and marketing, education, consultancy, school improvements, strategic planning, and the building and development of teams. Her commitment to excellence extends to training and development where she empowers individuals and teams to reach their full potential. With a keen understanding of the education landscape, she has become a driving force in enhancing educational institutions. A strategic vision and hands-on approach have contributed to the success of the schools and education center under her guidance. Ladies and gentlemen, she is a leadership and career coach, school improvement strategist with a stand ovation and a clap and a shout ovation. Please let's make welcome Carol Barlow. Can we make the applause better please? Let's celebrate her the way we do in Nigeria. Do you like Nigerians now? That's right. You're welcome, man. Wow, 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 wow. Make some noise. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm dressed for Nigeria. <laughs> so whilst you're all stood up, I do things a little bit differently. Is that okay? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, sing along along with me. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Give yourselves a round of applause. And me. <laughs> Please take a seat. So, I couldn't come here and start my session just anyhow. The reason I put on this outfit today, I said I'm going to be with creatives. I'm going to be with creatives, so I have to look the part. I have to look a bit fluffy and schmooze and look a bit, you know? Aha, I did this for you, you know. Is that all right? Aha. <laughs> so so I, I, I actually don't know who wrote my uh, bio book, but well done. Can I have a copy, please? Because <laughs> it sounded very, very good. Um, I, I just realized when my colleague was doing her session how quickly one hour goes. So permit me to get straight into my slides, straight into my session. This is a little bit about my company and what we do. What we're, our motto is transformational change through education. So everything I'm going to be doing today is coming from the premise of education. And I'm gonna show you exactly your part that you're going to play in that process. Is that OK? Yeah, good, good. Get your pens at the ready. Get your pens at the ready, because today we're going to be talking about transformational change through education. A little bit about what we do. Uh, we train. We do teacher training and development, building leadership capacity, training, mentorship, school improvement, systemization. And believe me, we'll be bringing a little bit of that in today. We'll be talking about, we do school audits, we do school inspections, we do quality assurance programs, we do Cambridge and Cobius accreditations, and much, much more. So a little bit about me. I have been in Nigeria for the past, June will be nine years. So I'm one of you. Um, I also just found out my sister did her DNA, 
and I'm 26% Nigerian. Yes. And it's all here. <laughs> it's all here. So I'm actually one of you. I've picked up just a little bit of an accent. Can you hear it? Listen very carefully. You'll hear the British, but you might just hear a little bit of lingo here and there. So our title today is Healthy School, Healthy Outcomes, specifically making your school culture count. Now, are you a traditional school? No. But are you an education institution that teaches? Yes. So we're looking at your organizational culture and how we can make it count for better outcomes. Are we clear? Good. We have developed this program here, this, this framework for school improvement. And there are six domains for rapid improvement in any organization. But today, we're going to talk about that in terms of school and education. You must have, there are six domains for school improvement. There's transformative leadership, transformative development. Transformative development was everything my colleague was talking about, was the HR functions. How do you keep people in an organization working effectively, working at the top of their game, and how do you retain good hands? And where people are not uh, doing what they should be doing, how can we either bring you up or bring you out? Are we clear? So that's what transformative development means. Transformative instruction is what you do when you're teaching. Transformative instruction is about your teaching and learning. Transformative information systems is about data, information. How do you know how well you're doing? Where's the data to support that? Very often, I've found since I've been in this country particularly, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence for everything. He said, she said. And the way I see it is not the way you saw it. So where is your evidence? But I told the director. See when you're in trouble? But I told the director, or I told so-and-so, or I told so-and-so, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? Did you send an email? Did you send an email? Did you back it up with some documentation? You say you told someone. He's saying that he doesn't remember hearing you know, what you asked him to do, so, you know? So, transformative information systems is about data and information. What information do you have? For example, how do you know how well your students are doing in your, in, 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 with what you're teaching them? How do you know? What are the parameters? So, for example, you know, in, in the UK, I remember studying the keyboards, uh, piano, specifically. And I remember I was learning, and I could play lots of tunes, but I wasn't graded until I took an exam. The exam was what validated that I'd reached a particular level of performance. Are we, are we clear? So what was on that journey to getting that first exam, or to passing that first exam, what were the milestones? What were the milestones along the way? Could I do my C scale? Could I do my D scale? Do you understand? What were the practices? What were the milestones along the way? We need to be able to keep data and information. OK, the next one which we're going to talk about today is transformative culture. Transformative culture. Now, these remember, these are all the things. We're only going to talk about one area today, which is school culture. But these are all things that help an organization to improve. Transformative culture is what we're going to talk about today. And the last one is transformative stakeholder relationships. Now, quick um, 30 seconds, talk to the person next to you. Who are your stakeholders? Really quickly, who are your stakeholders? 30 seconds. All right, who are your stakeholders? Let me hear from you. Just one, just give me one. Parents, who's your stakeholder? Students, who's your stakeholder? Admin, who's your stakeholder? Family, who's your stakeholder? Relations, you mean what relations? Your family? He said family. Give us another one. Staff, the colleagues that you're working with, your boss, yes? The community, these are all your stakeholders. 
So we are going to touch a little bit on stakeholder relationships, but today we're going to be focusing very much on school culture. So again, talk in your talk groups, what is school culture in your opinion and why is it important? I'm going to give you one minute. Off you go. What is school culture and why is it important? Just, there's no wrong answer. I just want you to give an idea of what you think school culture means and why is it important. You see, when I'm, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm giving you things to talk about, it's because I'm not here to spoon feed you. I'm not here to spoon feed you. It's interactive. I'm getting you to think. So, you said, what do you think school culture is? Okay. So, so what he said is, if we link it with culture, it's the way we do things. Can I paraphrase? The way we do things. What does that include then? Sir, can I hear from you? What does that include? Could be your teaching methodology. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yes? You have to do something different now. Okay, so, so our values, would that be a fair way to use our values, our character, the way we present ourselves to the children, right? The way we behave and we interact with one another, right? Again, because of time, I'm going to move on. But you're absolutely right. It is the norms, values, beliefs, traditions, stories, symbols. Like one of the things that I would like to hear Maybe it's for another day, but I'd love to hear the story of how this wonderful music school started. That's the story. Your story is how did you get involved? My story is how did I get involved? Do you understand? So, so your story it are all those things that end up leaving a legacy along the way. You know, when we're talking about stories, those, those are the the legacy making stories if you tell the story of nigeria you can't talk about you can't talk about nigeria without talking about colonialism biafra it, uh, let's not go into the, all the negative things that we can talk about but you you can't right we all have stories so stories and then symbols what symbols are, do you have within your organization and these are all the things that make up school culture so what is your school culture? A culture can be strong or weak, and it is very, very dependent on the interactions from within the organization, right? It's very dependent on the interactions between individuals. So for example, when I was listening to my colleague deliver, I remember this gentleman asking a question, what happens, what do we do when someone is doing more work than everyone else? That means he's got an issue, right? That means maybe he's got an issue or he's heard of an issue within the organization. And actually the school culture does not allow him to call it out. Maybe, perhaps, right? So how do we develop a school culture where communication is such that I can tell you about yourself without you being offended? Do you understand? Where there's a level of transparency, a level of honesty, where your values are at the core. You know, we were, uh, my, uh, my colleague was talking about turning up late, right? Those are our value systems. When I go to a school and I'm standing at the gate, and school is supposed to resume at 7.30, and at 8 o'clock, parents are dropping off their children. I have a big problem with that. Because, because we have, that means that school has developed a culture of lateness. And when you're seeing it over and over and over again, there's a culture of lateness. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, there is a culture of lateness 
in the society. Am I being tr truthful? Right? So that permeates your organizations. And we think it's okay. You know, people laughingly talk about Nigeria time. And when I talk, I say, please, we're not working Nigerian time, we're working British time. Thank you. If I say we're having a five minute break, we're having a five minute break. And if you're not back on time, I will shut the door. Because I have values. Do you understand? So we need to see what those values are and we need to stand on those values. So a strong school culture is about the interactions between people in the organization. There are many overlapping and cohesive interactions so that knowledge about the organization's distinctive character are widespread. Did you hear me? I said our school's distinctive character is widespread. You see, when you call the name of your school, Eagles Music Academy, people say, wow, you work there? My goodness. People are supposed to say that because they've heard the name of the organization, because the characteristics of the people in that organization are so high, because the reputations are so high, that if you belong to that organization, people see you in a new light. Are we seeing it? Yes? So that's part of what developing a strong school culture is all about. And it is not one person that develops a school culture. A negative school culture. I want you to reflect on this because I am sure, in fact, I can guarantee that 90% of you in this room have worked in a negative school culture at some point where relationships are toxic, where there's a lack of collaboration. It's me, myself, and I. As long as I'm doing my thing, I don't care what the other person is doing. Teachers do not believe in the ability of the students to achieve. Look at yourselves, ask yourself that question. Have you ever looked at a child and said, my gosh, I wish the parents had never brought this child to this school. They have no ear for music. They have no rhythm. Come on, admit it now. Admit it. There's times when you've looked at a child and said, what am, I, what am I supposed to do with this child? <laughs> like there's, there's, no, there's no hope, right? There's no hope. What are these parents expecting from me? You know, your, your ED was talking to me um, yes, yesterday, right? Was it last night? We were speaking about some of the issues. Parents come and expect miracles from you. And then they're disappointed when you don't deliver. And that can lead to disengagement, it can lead to disappointment, it can lead to you high staff turnover because you, you just think, oh, do I really want to put myself under this kind of pressure? And so we decide instead we're going to leave. In the average school, teachers not believing in the ability of students to achieve means that other things can happen. I think you know what I mean, right? If I don't believe that you're going to succeed in my class, what might I do to help you? Go answer it. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, right? Do I, do I need to sort of bring out an envelope to show you, to, to, to demonstrate what I mean? Sometimes parents will come to a school and say, at all costs, my child is not doing well. At all costs, he must get an A. At all costs. And it is more prevalent now than ever before. I've been here nine years. When I came, it's not as bad as it, was, it is today. Exam malpractice is rife. It's rife and it's worrying. But that's what happens when you have a negative school culture. In a positive school culture, this is what happens. Success, the school is successful and it is empowering. 
It empowers teachers to teach. It empowers leaders to lead. It empowers students to learn. It is a positive school environment. Educators and administrators believe in the students' ability. And we will take you, even if you're a weak student, we will bring out something in you. Right? Something. A child might come to this school and you just think, there's no hope. This child can't, hasn't got any skill. This child can't sing. But can they bang a drum? Can they shake a tambourine? Is there something? Maybe they're not meant to play, but maybe they can hear and understand tones in music and understand transitions in music. Does it have to be that they play at all times? As long as they're involved, as long as they're part of, of you. You know, how do we adapt the curriculum that we're offering to suit even the least able? And, and, and when we're talking about the least able, I believe that they're, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a musician. You have gifted children, right? Naturally gifted children, that once you teach them how, they fly. They're naturally gifted. Some of them already come with that gifting. Then there are children who are highly skilled. In other words, you can teach them and they will never be, you know those pianists that just do all of this fancy, fancy doodah. They can pick up on anybody's song and just naturally start playing it. They might never be that person, but they can read music and they can play a song, right? So they're technically skilled. And then you have another set of children who maybe are not gifted, and are not skilled. What is it? This is something I want you to think about moving forward. Because I'm leaving you today with things to go away and think about and to talk about. So what do you do for your least able? What can you do for your least able? In a positive school culture, you encourage your fellow staff members and students along the way. So it's very much about relationships. What did I say? Relationships. Positive relationships. You know, I've been into several organizations where there's a negative school culture and there's a lot of toxicity and there's a lot of backbiting. And when I walk in as the consultant, everybody wants to tell me their story. I'm sure you've seen that, right, ma'am? Yes. Everybody wants to tell you their story. He said, she said. Uh, it was her. Do you see how they behave? Uh, they're just chatting. They're always talking behind my back. I don't care if they're talking behind your back. Do the job you're paid to do. Right? Use your job description and do the job you're paid to do and stop dealing with emotive, irrelevant, irrational behaviors. You don't have to like the person you're working with. Do you know how many times I've had to literally line manage people that in some cases repulse me? But I deal with you in a professional way. I don't need to like you. I don't need to be going out at the weekend with you. I don't need to be your friend. Do you understand? There are some colleagues I have who I respect highly for what they do. But socially, we could never be friends. I respect them. We laugh and we joke and we communicate effectively about the job at hand, but socially, we would never be friends. And that's okay. Do you understand? We don't need to like or be friends with everybody. If we do, it's a bonus. If we do, it's a bonus. And you see, part of, part of developing a school culture is you arrange a night out. I'm a good Christian girl and I decide I don't want to go because maybe there's going to be smoking and maybe there's going to be drinking and I don't do those things. Get off your high horse, go out, spend 30 minutes with your colleagues have a laugh and then say, I've got to go, the family are waiting. But go, show your face. It's being part of, of, of developing a collegiate structure. 
Do, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah? So these are the kind, so it's all about relationships. And then, of course, students in a positive school culture, students are actively involved in their own success. Now, to be actively involved, in fact, I'm running ahead. So let me tell you what that means. All right? Are we together? How do we improve the school culture? How do we improve the school culture? Number one, we build a strong community intensely focused on student learning. If students are not learning, we're not a community because that's what you're here for. So we must build a strong community where students are learning. How do we do that? We celebrate every success, no matter how small. Celebrate every success, no matter how small. And what I will say is those, those children that are not as gifted or as skilled are the ones that you must give the most encouragement to. Those are the ones you must give. Because you see what we do, and because most of you, I guess, in the room are musicians, you will want to work with the gifted and talented. Or you will want to work with the highly skilled. You don't particularly enjoy working with those that you just think, oh my goodness, they're just, they just shouldn't be here. So we avoid them, and we ostracize them, and we risk we risk damaging their self-esteem. So we must celebrate every, every single step, every achievement by building a positive school culture. How do we do that? We set explicit expectations. Explicit expectations. So what you would expect from a gifted and talented child what you would expect from a highly skilled child will be different from what you expect from a child who's not gifted or not skilled. But you will set him or her goals and expectations nonetheless. Are we clear? We have to set them goals, but their milestones will be a little smaller. But they're still milestones of progress. Number two. We solicit and act upon stakeholder feedback. And my colleague said to earlier that um, she, 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 she gave a wonderful story about how her child is developing in so many different ways, not just musically, but based on confidence, right? And also easing themselves away from people that you didn't want him mixing with. So the music is just part of it. It's just part of it. Understand that what you're not doing, you're not simply teaching them music. Can I say that? You are teaching them life skills. You're teaching them life skills. I'm going to come to that shortly. I don't want to run ahead of myself. So you need to listen to your parents. Sometimes when you hear your parents you might feel disheartened, you might feel discouraged, you might think, do they not understand how difficult it is? But listen to them. I'll tell a little story about um, um, when I first came to Nigeria, I was a very emotional woman. You know, you just had a session on emotional intelligence. I was off the hook. I would cry at anything. And you know, <laughs> Nigerians are not easy. Nigerians are really not easy. And I remember I had one senior colleague on the, um, on the governing board who used to walk into my office and just start, start to, Madam, why has this not been done? I'd say, well, you have to understand, sir, it's a process. You know, I know what I'm doing. It's a process. I don't give a damn about process. We haven't got time. We're failing. We're failing school. Blah, 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 blah. And next thing, next thing, He's, and he's tall, and he's big, and he's dominant, and I'm sat down, and he's stood up, and he's marching around my office, and I'm suddenly getting very emotional. Why do you have to talk to me? And I was literally crying. I was literally crying. And I said to him, you, know, you, you might be telling the truth, but you, you don't have to say it that way. Oh, you know, said to me, I'll be 
I'm not like that anymore. Just, just say Nigeria happens to me, right? <laughs> I'm tough now. I'm tough. <laughs> so, so interestingly enough, I was in that school nine years ago, and I'm now back there as their consultant. So. <laughs> So this particular individual is still on the governing board, who's now in charge of ICT. So I called him and said, sir, please, the ICT team wants to meet with you. There are certain improvements and changes that we need to make. So he came with his big self, you know, he's, he's a red. He's a, an absolute extreme red. And he came in and he was giving them a really hard time. And I just said, sir, excuse me, sorry. You told me that you only had a short amount of time. So can we stop talking and get to the matter at hand? Everybody in the room who was scared of him was like, eh? <laughs> that I can talk to. And even he was like, okay, madam. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, please, let's move on. And I was like, did I just do that? Really? Because I used to be really scared of him. I'm tough. Nigeria happened to me. <laughs> so the third area of school improvements is to engage students and families and all stakeholders in pursuing educational grow goals and personal growth. So how else can you engage parents? Can you have lessons for parents? Can you begin to have classes about rhythm? Can you be explaining how you deliver the curriculum? Can you be explaining to them the benefits of music education? Can you begin to have workshops with them to help them understand what you do for the most able, what you do for the middle ability students, and what you do for the weakest students so they understand that the journey might be slower, but progress is still being made? Managing expectations. So just to talk about this, and, and, and I'm going to actually whiz through these slides. I've talked about building a strong community, um, celebrating su success. I think I've covered this, right? Um, I've covered that. Now, what I want you to do now, just for a few minutes, I've got 30 minutes, okay. What I want you to do now is I want you to have a quick discussion in threes or fours, and I'm gonna give you a bit more time for this. I want to give you about at least five minutes. And I want you to have a discussion about the benefits of music education to a child of any age. To a child of any age. It says here, music teachers play the right note. So I want you to just take five minutes and jot it down. Just do a brainstorm. What do you think is the benefits of music education? Now, I'm not just talking about learning music and having a, um, a skill. Beyond that, how does music help a child? Five minutes, please. What? I want to hear talking.
All right, five there, minutes are up. Ma'am, there's, there's a team here that you haven't interacted with. Yeah, the team at the back here, please. It's the chickenless team, ma'am. But if I come there, you know, and you don't give me as good answers as the team, you know I'm going to fire the lot of you, right? I will fire you. You're welcome, ma'am. We have so much to say. Shall I go and test them? Please feel Shall we free. go and see what, they've, yeah. what they said up at the back? Where are we? Where's the team at the back? This team at the back, okay. Let's, let's hear you. I'll be sharing your answers with them so they can see whether you've got uh, that level of excellence that they need. All right, so we Go had, ahead. so we wrote down seven. Seven, yes. okay. So the first one is that actually helps, it makes them disciplined, right? Yes, they've already said that. All right, so Keep it, going. it fosters focus. Yeah, right. we've had that as well. It enhances creativity. No, we've not had that. Okay, you can have that one. Yes, yeah, it helps them. Give them a round of applause. They said creativity. <laughs> yeah. It helps them on multitask. Multitasking. Yeah. They didn't say that. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We're getting there. It boosts there. their confidence, right? We had that one. All yes, right. we've so had that one. It improves their IQ. Improves and it their IQ. Yes. How? Like they're, they're, they're very, they do very well in school, in class. Uh -huh. Yes, they do very well in uh -huh. class. Where's your research supporting <laughs> that? <laughs> no, I, it actually, we, it, it has been proven. It has. To, to, and there's one, it, it, it makes them very organized. And it yes. helps to make them very... Organized. Organized. Aha, uh -huh. really? Really? Are we sure? Our son, too, I mean. Fantastic. Can we give our team a, a round of applause at the back? Thank you. Well done. Uh, so, so you see, now the question I want to ask is, why, did I, why do you think I asked you to do that exercise? We've been talking about school culture. Why do you think I asked you to take some time to itemize how music education um, develops a child and why, therefore, it is important? Why have I asked you to do that? Uh, maybe, okay, for you to know your strengths. What else? To know your objectives, thank you, that's a good one. What else? To know how you're impacting, right? 
to know your duty. Now, one of the conversations that we had, I had with uh, the ED yesterday was actually about how sometimes we can be discouraged when parents expect more of us than we can actually deliver. Or they want things to happen yesterday, right? I've just given you, or you have just given you, a long list of benefits beyond them being able to play a piece of music. You've just listed a whole lot of benefits. Now, you see, what we need to do when we're inducting children into the music school is you need to say beyond music, beyond skill, beyond talent, this is what we will do for your child. Are we seeing it? Because you see, we need to let parents know that we are not miracle workers, but we can definitely add value beyond musical ability. So when a child in, uh, in primary school begins to, to get themselves ready for school and, and they put everything in order, because they've been taught at the music academy to have things well organized and well structured, that is growth. When a child who was starting to get a bit wayward and mixed with the wrong people begins to be more disciplined because he's earning more respect because of what he's doing, that is progress. Are we seeing it? So you see, when parents are on your neck and expecting the world, you give them the stars. And you share with them beyond your child's ability to play a song or to sing a song. This is what we're trying to impart in your child. Please, sir, please, madam, have patience with us. We're going somewhere. Are, you, are we together? Are we inspired? Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. So you see, and this is almost my last slide. This slide, I'm going to share my slides with you because this is something that I found on the internet today. The benefits of music on child development. So the ones you didn't get are the ones you're going to add to your list. Early language development, nobody said that. You go into any early years classroom, and what are they doing? They're singing songs. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Is that not where I started? The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. They're using music to learn, right? So they're learning about rhythm. They're learning cognitively. They're developing their language skills. So even if they can't speak, and they're amongst others that can speak, so they're saying, uh, 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 round, uh, round, and yeah, they can't write. But within a few weeks, they're saying, the wheels on the bus go round and round. And then we still not, may not have the total clarity. But you, through singing, are developing early language. None of you wrote said that. Write it down. You improve mood and emotional regulation. So a child who is very angry or very agitated, you put on a little classical music or a little smooth jazz and you help them to moderate their mood and temper their emotions, which is part of what we were talking about when we were talking about behavior modification. You mentioned discipline, patience, and discipline. And alongside patience and discipline is resilience. Resilience, the ability to try, try, try again. I get I keep getting it wrong. I keep missing a note, but you keep trying and you keep trying and you keep trying. We're building resilience in our children. You're improving memory and concentration because they're having to learn songs. They're having to learn notes. 
they're having to learn where where the notes are on a, on a stave. Are you impressed with my language? I'm using music language. Uh -huh. uh, if I tell you the last time I did music education, I think I deserve a round of applause. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay, it's okay. So you see, um, and maybe I should come back. You know, you know, I've reached that age where the memory's starting to go. Maybe, maybe I need to come to have you teach me some music. Uh -huh. Good. And just as our colleagues at the back said, woo, 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 higher scores in standardized tests such as the SATs. Self-confidence, self-esteem, self-expression. Self-confidence, you mentioned that. Self-esteem, being proud of yourself. Not just self-confidence, but self-esteem being confident, being, being self-assured, and then self-expression. Music is a fantastic method of self-expression because, you know, one of the things I love about my son is the way I raised him. You know, my mom loved classical music, so whenever he stayed at my mom's, he was enjoying classical music. I love jazz, I love reggae, I love soul, I love gospel, I love, I mean, he's so eclectic. So my son, when, he, when, he, when he's in his car in the UK and he's driving along and he hears one of those old tunes, he'll send it to me on, on one of these apps, what is it, Apple. He'll just send it, he said, mom, do you remember this old tune? You know, like music connects you to your history. Music also connects you to your history. Music connects you relationally. So my son and I are separated, but he'll hear a tune that takes him back to a memory. These are all the things that you're doing for these children. I hope you, I hope you I, I, are you beginning to feel your self-esteem grow? Your own self-esteem. Are you proud? Good. Cooperation and cross-cultural awareness. <laughs> if you ever put on a Nigerian beat now and ask me to dance, you will all end up laughing yourselves silly, right? Because I, 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 I don't matter, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm just that second offbeat. Because it's not the beat that I've been raised with. You know, the Nigerian beat is just slightly different, Afrobeats is just slightly different from what we hear in the West. So, you know, I'm dancing, I'm doing my little one finger dance and they just, they, they just laugh because I'm just about one second off beat. But cultural awareness is also a fantastic thing. Gross and fine motor skills. What's the difference between gross and fine motor skills? What do we mean by that terminology? What do we mean by fine motor skills? What do we need fine motor skills for? Fine motor skills for writing. This is our fine motor skills. Holding things. This is a fine dexterity, right? Gross motor skills. You need gross motor skills for playing the drums because that's where you're moving your whole body, right? So gross motor skills and fine motor skills, physical endurance, mental endurance, increased ability to learn foreign languages. Are you seeing it? If you're musically inclined, it's likely that you can hear languages because you're used to listening to tones and sounds. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Because in music and through music, you're listening to, so, to sounds and tones and rhythms, you are able to grasp languages differently and understand where, where particular accents come in. Do you get what I mean? So, this is everything that you are doing at Eagles Music Academy with these children. So don't ever, ever let any parents make you feel that you're not doing a good job. You need to be able to share with them beyond giftings and talents. This is what we are doing for your child. 
And actually, one of these slides, this slide here, I think would be part of your induction pack for parents moving forward so that they fully understand that it's not just about the music. So, guys, I, I'm, I'm done, and I'm 12 minutes, 12 minutes early. So over to you for some questions, questions, questions. Yes, sir. I still don't have all the answers. So if I am working in a school where there's a challenge in the early years, I bring in an early years specialist. If I'm working in a school where they have a challenge with special educational needs, which is what you're talking about, and disabilities, I bring in a special needs consultant. Or I'll seek help from someone that is an expert in special educational needs. Maybe not musically, but someone that perhaps can give us a bit of guidance about how to get started. Does that make sense? Because even in special schools in the UK, where children are physically challenged, we, they learn through music. Music is their medium that they're teaching some of these children. They use drums, they lose percussion, they use maracas. You know, they use things that children can shake. Children, for, children in the early years may not necessarily be put on a keyboard, but they can shake, they can tap, they can play with different m instruments that make a noise and therefore create a rhythm. Does that make sense? And, you tr and the other thing is, try out different things. If she's, you know, if, if a, ch a child is not gifted in a particular area, you'll still let them have a go and you encourage them for every milestone, but you will also try, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? So we try different things. That's what we do in a normal classroom. If I'm teaching maths to a child, I remember teaching a child maths, and it was one of my most challenging years. The child in my class was blind. Right? She was blind. So she had a worker with her who was teaching her in Braille, as in she was, she was doing the Braille for her. And I remember one time, she was always sat near the front of the class, and she, and she understood most of what was going on. But this particular time, we were doing something like um, shapes. We were doing something like Pythagoras' theorem. So I said, right, so can everybody look at the diagram on the board? <laughs> no, I can't, <laughs> you know? And, and what we had to do is learn that we had to give any resources to the support teacher before the lesson so that she could now turn it into a braille diagram. So that when I'm in the lesson, the, 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 the teacher that's supporting can now bring the necessary. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Thank you so much. Can you clap for yourselves again? Clap for yourselves, clap for yourselves, clap for yourselves.